afternoon everybody it's that time of week again and it's Saturday afternoon so that means story time and today's book is called you turkeys these are from a selection of books called mates great Australian yarns so this is all Aussie books and who have we got today I've got Ashley Ashley is an Ashton Drake doll then I've got little Ruby You've seen Ruby in the order of earlier film. And I got my new baby Mary. Is settling in pretty good. And of course we've got the little fella in the front. Coffee, yay! So he's sitting here, ready to watch the story, aren't you, Garfield? Yeah. And of course, I decided to put Grover in it this week. Yes, he must. So, he's sitting up the back, watching over... Oh, oh you can't see him. That's all right. Okay, today's book, as I said, is called You Tuppies. Oh, Ashley, yes. Let's see what we've got today. Our backyard would dad... Would, start again. Our backyard would dad's pride and joy. He loved the flowers in their chip bark beds and the row of little ball-shaped shrubs. He loved a neat compost heap and the square of bright green lawn with its dead straight edges. Then the scrub turkeys came. They loved our backyard too. But Dad didn't love them, not one bit. Get! Go on, get out of here, you lot, he shouted down from the back deck when he discovered two of them pecking around the tulips. Ooh. See, they're scrub turkeys. Yes. Sprays of chip bark were shooting out from behind them as they raked away furiously with their shark claws. Oi, go on, get, get out of it, he shouted even louder. But they kept right on going. Their baldy red heads kept bobbing up and down. Their necklaces of loose yellow skin kept wobbling from side to side. Their tails stuck up like black fans. It was only when Dad went across the yard waving a garden rake like a madman that they finally got the message. And they leaped onto our back fence and flew into the branches of Mrs. Nunja's big fig tree. That's where they stayed, looking down on our backyard like hungry vultures. Why are you scaring the birdies, Daddy? That was my little sister, Anna. She doesn't even go to school yet, so she's got no idea about anything. Can't have them in our nice backyard, sweetie. They're wild animals. They'll wreck the joint. But at kindy, Mrs. Pettigrew Lily says we're supposed to share. You're not sharing, Daddy. Why aren't you sharing? Oh, she's got him there. Like I said, no idea. Dad just gave her a crooked sort of smile and turned to Mum for help. Tell her, love. Don't look at me, Mum said, folding her arms. I think Mrs. Pettigrew Lily might just have a point. All this bushland not long ago, and the scrub turkeys were here first. Good on, Mum. Dad blew out a long breath and shook his head slowly. Come on, Jake, he said to me. Looks like it's up to the men folk to defend our home against invaders. To the shed! To tell you the truth, I didn't mind seeing the scrub turkeys in our backyard. It was kind of cool, but not as cool as doing stuff with Dad in the shed. That afternoon we made the best, best scarecrow ever out of a few bits of timber and some old overalls and gardening gloves. For the head we used one of my Halloween monster marks and the beaten up straw hat. Dad even let me dribble some red paint over it. 
Then we dug a hole and stood up in the back corner of the garden. It looked like a blood splattered zombie. It was awesome and it worked. Look guys, look at the scarecrow. Do you see the scarecrow? Got a scarecrow, look at him. Well, it worked on mum when she took scraps down to the compost heap and stumbled across it in the dark. Mrs. Remishin said she heard mum scream from the end of the street, even with his hearing aid turned off. Oh, it must have been a very big scream. After that, mum wasn't too impressed with our scarecrow. But then, by the next day, neither was dad. It all started when Anna ran through the house yelling, Come and see what the birdies have done! Come and see what the birdies have done! When Mum and I got there, Dad and Anna were staring at the backyard. Anna's mouth and eyes were like three big O's. Dad's were like three thin slits. Ooh, I wonder what's happening in the backyard, eh? <laughs> I can see it, that's why I'm laughing. This was because every one of his flowers had been ripped from the ground. Now they were scattered right across the lawn. So was most of the chick bark from the garden beds. One of the scrub turkeys was still scratching at the roots of the lopsided ball-shaped tree. The other one was perched on the scarecrow's shoulder, pecking at his hat. <laughs> Look! The scarecrow, he's taken all the plants out. Look at that. Look, guys, do you see? Yeah, you're looking. Ashley's got that great look on her face. That's when Dad did a repeat performance of his mad men with a rake thing. With the turkey safely back up as in, in Miss New, Nugent's big fig tree, we all helped put the garden back together. When it was done, Dad and I pulled the scarecrow apart and packed it away in the shed. At least Mum seemed happy. Right, Dad said to me when we finished, time for Plan B. To the romper's room. Plan B consisted of us cutting out long, tiny strips of aluminium foil and tying them on the shrubs, the fences, the branches and the poncing out a tree. I know this is going to work, eh? Oh, Ashley, you're looking very intent there. When Then we made wind chimes by stringing together whatever we could find. We used rusted tools, painted tit, paint tin lids, and old forks and spoon. When we hung them up in the garden, they clunked and rattled in the breeze. Plan B was lots of fun. I reckon that'll do the trick, Jakey boy, Dad said, nodding his head. Those turkeys will be well and truly spooked by all the racket and all the flashing light. Mum wasn't so sure. Neither was Anna. Yeah, you built the birdies a fairy garden. Daddy, they'll love it. I told you, no idea. The following morning had a familiar ring to it. The birdies done it again, Daddy. They done it again. Anna was right. As the foil strip flashed and the wind chimes clanged around them, two scrub turkeys scratched happily about in a totally wrecked garden. Oh, looks like they did it again. Look, see? Wrecked the garden again, guys. Look at that Garfield. No, you can't chase that bird. That bird. He's protected. After did a... After Dad did a second encore of his mad men with the rake thing, he took down all the streamers and chimes and began to repair the damage. Having some fun with scrub turkeys, I see, said Mrs. Nugen from next door, leaning over the fence and smiling. Remarkable animal. That's Electra Lathamini. That's her proper name, you know. No, it's not, Anna said. The big one's named Blackie and the little one's Scrubby. Dad reckoned that he had his own name for the scrub turkeys. Anna asked what they were. Dad said, never mind. I wonder what, I wonder what the names were. Hey? They're very determined creatures, Mrs. Nugent said. You can't beat them, you know. They'll keep coming back if they want to. 
there's not much you can do to stop them. Well, we'll see about that, was all Dad said. Mrs. Nugent laughed wished and wished us good luck as she left. What she doesn't realise, Dad said with a grin, that I have a secret weapon. Plan C, I asked. Plan C it is, Dad said with a nod and a wink. To the kitchen. I wonder what he's doing now. Eh? Let's we'll just have to wait and see. Plan C wasn't nearly as much fun as Plan A or Plan B, but it was pretty sneaky. And it was much quicker and easier to put into operation. All Dad had to do was the big get the big plastic container of pepper from the pantry and squeeze heaps of it all out of the garden bed. I had to watch from the deck. Won't hurt the plants at all. They'll sure get those turkey noses. Daddy called up to me after shaking clouds of pepper around the yard. That was just before he had the first five massive sneezing fits. Oh, pepper does that to you. Dad wasn't quite clean on Plan C after that. It got even worse when Charlie, our King Charles Spaniel, raced through the back door and dashed in a dizzy circles around the lounge room. He was yelping and sniffing and rubbing his nose along the carpet. Oh, I think he got some pepper off his nose. After that, Mum was as happy as the pep was about as happy with the pepper idea as she had been about the scarecrow. Anna wasn't too happy either. She wasn't allowed to play in the background until it was safe for human habitation. And Charlie definitely wasn't happy. About the only happy ones were the scrub turkeys. The pepper didn't bother them at all. They came back the next day to do their usual demolition job on the backyard. This time, Dad glared at them like he was one of the even masterminds of a superhero movie. Then he did an extreme version of a madman with the rake thingy. It was a bit scary. Ah, uh, plan D, Dad, I suggested. You got it, matey, he said, squinting at the turkeys in the fruit tree. To the hardware store. Well, I wonder if he's going to Bunnings. Four hours later, Plan D was completed. Ha! Let's see them get through that. Dad with a glint in his eye. He was sure he had finally beaten the scrub turkey. So was I. Just one thing worried me about Plan D. I wonder what Plan D is. What do you think? Mum will say. The smile faded from Dad's face. When Mum saw Plan D, she didn't say a word. She just, she just turned her head slowly from one side of the yard to the other. I guess it must have been a bit of a shock to see all the garden box by timber frames and completely covered in chicken wire. Why have you put the garden in the prison for, Daddy? Was it that bad? I'll just let you guess who that was. Oh my God, look at he's done. Oh, he's put them all in fences so the turkeys won't get, look, they're in jail. Yeah. Little Anna didn't like them. Mum turned and looked at Dad. It wasn't one of her good looks. It was the only way to stop them, love, Dad said, holding up his hands. Si silence. It was them or us, Dad said. More silence. You have to fight fire with da with fire, Dad said. Even more silence. Well, they started it. It didn't really take that long for Dad and me to pull down all the chip and wire and the timber frames. No, it didn't take long, I wouldn't. The next week, a family was invited to spend the weekend at Uncle Ronald's farm. On the morning we left, Dad took one last look at the backyard with its neat flower garden garden, and its green grass and straight edges. Mm, they're going away, eh? be interesting. When we returned two days later, all the flowers were shredded and all the gardens were right bare. Now all the chip bark and the mulch from the compost heap was piled up in a big mound. 
It was spilled over the edges of the garden and covered half the lawn. Strutting proudly around it were two scrub turkeys. I held out the rake for Dad, but he didn't take it. Right, he said, time to put a stop to this once and for all. Mum's forehead creased with worry. What do you mean, put a stop to it? You're not going to do anything silly, are you? Only what I should have done from the start. Come on, Jake, to the ute. Time for plan E. Then he added with a tight smile. E for eliminate. Look what they've done. they built. What they've built, that is a nest. Mm. That's how our scrub turkeys build nests. See what? Nests. See the nest? Do you know what that means? Hey? Eh? We'll see. Plan E took three days, a, a few trips to the nursery, some heavy equipment and a lot of hard work. And Dad was right. E was for elimination. After three days, the old garden with its flowers and ball-shaped trees and its straight edges and square lawn was completely gone. <gasps> oh, my goodness. Look what they've done. They've taken it all away. Look, no more garden, no more green grass. On what he's going to do. In its place was a garden of leafy mulch with a pond and a bird bath in the centre. All around it were newly planted native trees and bushes. A row of big moss covered bush rocks circled the scrub turkey's mound. I love it, Mum said. Me too, I said. Me three, Anna said. And they weren't the only ones. The lorikeets, honey eaters, and all the other birds came to feed on the berries and blossoms and drink from the bird bath. Loved it too. <gasps> Look at it. That is so much better. He's got some nice. He's got some nice Aussie birds in his nice Aussie backyard. And so did the water dragons that chased each other around the pond. And so did the big blue tongue lizard that made his home among the rocks. But the scrub turkeys loved it most of all. <laughs> Even Dad didn't mind that he'd lost his backyard. At least I still have the front yard for my roses and flowers. For a long time it looked like everybody was happy. But then early one morning, come and see the birdies done. Hurry, come and see what the birdies have done. What could I have done now? Hey, let's see. I was almost too frightened to look. When I did, I thought Anna must have been playing a joke on us. Because everything in the backyard was exactly the same. The two scrub turkeys were fussing around on their mould as they always did. Then I saw a fuzzy little brown chick scuttle out from behind some bushes. Then I saw another one scratching at the back of the pond. And then I saw another one, and another one, and another one. In the end, we counted 15 scrub turkey chicks scattered around our yard. <gasps> oh, I wonder where they come. They must have just hatched out of the mole, Daddy's Dad said, looking a bit pale. We're outnumbered. That's it, I give up. Oh, the shame of it all, beaten by a pair of turkeys. Don't worry, Daddy, a Anna said, taking his hand. Maybe the just the birdies just want want wanted babies more than you wanted your garden. Dad smiled and put his arm around Hannah and me. Fair enough too, he said. Fair enough. I guess my little sister can be pretty smart sometimes, even if she doesn't go to school yet. But I'm warning them, Dad said. The front yard is mine. You hear that, you lot? Mine. There'll be no turkeys in the front yard. When Mum heard that, she gave a sneaky grin and wrinkled her nose. Well, maybe just one, hey? She said as she patted his stomach. Look what I have to put up with, Dad said, rolling his eyes and throwing his hands. First the scrub turkeys, and now you. I deserve an award. Dad got his wish. The next day, when Anna told the whole scrub turkey story at kindy, Miss Pettigrew Lily gave her a special certificate to bring home. 
There was a gold star on it and it said to Hannah, to Anna's dad for being a super sharer. Oh. And that's it. Mm -hmm. Yes, in Australia we have these bush turkeys. Um, and these bush turkeys are protected. They cannot be killed. That I know that I know my ex up north, they used to eat them when they were kids, but now it's they are protected. I remember when I lived in Moomba, there was one out there scratching. I didn't know what it was doing. And when I Googled, I found that he actually was building a nest. And yes, he had some, we called, what we called him? George. We called him George. And he had Georgina and all the little babies. And we used to feed this turkey. My ex-partner at the time actually brought some seed and we used to shake the container and they would hear it and they would come running for some food. You know? So they can they are destructive to Australia's backyard and wherever they are and I see an odd one here and there down here. But they are they are. They're a bush turkey, as I say. They're not like turkey we don't do not eat them. Do we babies? No, Australia do not eat their bush turkeys. I think they're the only turkeys we have. I was wondering that what was gonna be. Finally, Daddy won in the end. He built, finally, after all them plans he had. And because he shared his backyard with the turkeys, he got a certificate with a gold medal on it. Gold star. Wasn't he lucky? See, sharing is good. Sharing can bring rewards. So, people, I hope you enjoyed this little story today. I always continue with my story time every Saturday. And I hope you'll be back same time next week, same channel next week. And I'll have some different babies next week. When I go, yes, Garfield, you will be in all of them. And Garfield, sorry, Gar Grover, he's super Grover. Uh, if you don't know, Super Grover, Grover was my favourite Sesame Street character. Look at little Mary. Yeah. You're sitting there with your big sis and Garfield. Want to say goodbye? Goodbye. He's enjoy. You want to go and have a sleep? You're actually going to have a sleep? Yeah? Okay. So, everybody, thank you for joining. I hope you have enjoyed the story again today. I, I'm enjoying doing this. As you see in the last video I had just uploaded earlier, that I'm going to continue doing what I'm doing. I'm not I'm not going to fall by the wayside. I'm getting into it up and at them. Continue, continue to do what I'm doing. So, everybody, I will see you in my next video. So, everybody, I hope you have a good day and good luck with whatever you do in your life. Bye. <laughs>